Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I thought it was time to start putting up some uh, videos about my trip to Uzbekistan. I'm here from January to May. I am teaching for this semester so I'm having a great time and being able to explore some of the country. So I wanted to share some of that with you. This first video is basically going to be some of the things I've noticed about Uzbekistan that you might want to know if you come here. And uh, if you're going to travel here too, you might want to know some of these tips. Uh, first of all, very few people speak English. Uh, almost everyone has Russian as a second language, so if you can even sound out the Cyrillic letters, you might find that you can get around pretty well, because then you can at least read the names of the subway stations and things like that, uh, or, or look at menus and be able to sound out some things. So that helps. So my six words of Russian and being able to count to 10 have been very useful. So one of the quirks that I'm getting used to is uh, not tipping in restaurants. Uh, I have had a couple of people rush out of restaurants after me yelling, Miss, Miss, you left me too much money. Uh, so now I just pay what I owe and, and move on. So keep that in mind. Um, you'll find a lot of restaurants here that serve exactly the same thing. Uh, basically the burgers and fries of Uzbekistan is either plov or uh, shish kebabs. Uh, you'll see them as sashlik on the on the menus. Uh, so almost anywhere you go, you can get at least one of those two things. Uh, the kebabs are more common. Plov takes a while to make, so that's a little less common. Uh, but those are the two big dishes. And almost everywhere you go, there will be the national bread, naan. It's kind of like a donut, but the middle is, is flat. It's uh, not punched through. Uh, you will get uh, tea very easily. Everyone seems to drink tea or coffee. And uh, depending on the part of the country, they will either ask you green or black for the tea, or they'll just serve you green or black. So uh, it just kind of depends on what you get there. There are very few American chains here. I've seen a couple of KFCs and two Baskin Robbins. Uh, there was a place called Domino's in Samarkand, but it didn't use the Domino's logo, so I don't know if they're just using the name or if uh, the chain has come here and they're letting them use a different logo. I did investigate, but basically I haven't seen you know, Burger King or McDonald's or an IHOP or anything like that. So in that sense, it's kind of cool that you can just explore different restaurants. You're not looking at a whole row of American restaurants. Um, you're also not looking at a whole row generally of like souvenir shops that have postcards and, and little tchotchkes and stuff. There are a few, but the things they tend to stock are things like scarves and um, small figurines and refrigerator magnets. That's big. Everybody seems to have refrigerator magnets. But if you think you're going to go in a shop and see a lot of t-shirts and mugs and shot glasses and postcards, you're not. One of the weird things about my apartment is that the sink has the handle in between where the water comes out and the bowl of the sink. So while you are rinsing or washing dishes, you'll bump that handle in, in a way that either turns it off, and so you don't have water coming out, uh, or it turns it on full blast, which then you know sprays everything. So uh, it's kind of a weird design for a sink. I don't know if it's just my apartment or you know if everyone has a sink like that. I haven't really been in that many kitchens. But it is kind of a weird thing. Um, if you're a vegetarian, and especially if you're a vegan, you'll have a difficult time, at least at the moment, trying to find something to eat. Um, but, um, those don't seem to be concepts here so much. So you can get them to leave meat off of your food, but that doesn't mean they don't uh, boil it in meat broth or cook it in lard. So you, you might say that there's only vegetables or carbs in your meal, but you don't know what they cooked it in and it was probably an animal product. So that that's a little hard, I think. And if you're a vegan and you're not gonna eat any cheese or eggs or butter, um, you're gonna be really limited. You may do best to bring some power bars with you or something. I'm not really sure how you're gonna make it here as a vegan. Um, the one person I know who was a vegan who was here for a couple of weeks mostly survived on potatoes. Um, and he was only here again for a couple of weeks. But if you're gonna be here for a long time, you're gonna have a hard time. Um, and you'll have to be spending a lot of your time, I think, finding recipes or finding specialized restaurants or something and trying to explain to them that you don't want anything with eggs and butter and cheese and meat and seeing if you can get that idea across. Uh, remember, most people don't speak English here or they have five or six words. 
Uh, so communication can be difficult, especially if you want something special. So, you know, I don't like condiments on my food. Uh, no ketchup, mustard, relish, mayonnaise, anything like that. I hate salad dressing. It's all nasty to me. Um, so that's one reason I haven't gone to the burger places here because it's clear that they slather the burgers in something. It's probably mayonnaise. Um, they're big on mayonnaise here. Apparently they got that from the Russians. Uh, so I just don't go there because I'm not sure I can communicate that I want a hamburger and I don't want any condiments. So I just go to the um, Samsa or Sashlik places and eat that instead. I should mention Samsas. That some of them are filled with pumpkin or uh, potatoes. I don't know if they're fried in animal fat or not. That would be a question to ask. But uh, you can get ones that at least have vegetarian middles. And it's basically a samosa is like a Cornish pasty or you know a meat pie. It's it's some meat or something else surrounded by some uh, bread and then fried. So those are pretty tasty actually if you eat meat um, or if you don't mind if your pumpkin samosa was perhaps fried in lard. So. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, so far the weather has been pretty great. I mean it has rained the past couple of days pretty steadily but it is in the 50s so it's chilly but it's not really cold. Um, we have had a couple of kind of cold days. We did have one day where some snow came down but the, it was only it was still like 40 degrees so you know it's, it melted as soon as it hit the ground. Um, so at least we haven't had very much of a winter here. Um, I do not miss the winter back home where the home campus where I generally teach has been closed I think at least three times due to the weather already this winter. Um, but here has been great. Um, now because of issues with my feet, I wear orthopedic shoes and uh, two of the pairs I brought over are sandals and they're the most comfortable shoes I own. So I wear sandals a lot. Uh, and since it's been been in the 40s and, and 50s, I haven't really worried about, especially when I wear the compression socks and the sandals. So most of my feet are covered. Sometimes my toes are sticking out. The compression socks don't have toes. Um, but it has me meant that apparently my feet have been <clears throat> subject of discussion on campus uh, because people are wondering, um, is she from Siberia? She wears these you know, open-toed shoes in the winter. Um, so it's kind of weird being in a place where I don't think it's really cold because I hate the cold. I hate it so much. Uh, I really prefer warm weather. And if I never saw snow again, I probably would be just fine. But um, apparently, you know, the 40s or the 50s here is really cold. And you see people bundle up in scarves and padded coats and, and the whole, you know, hats and everything. I haven't noticed any mittens or gloves here, so but, but everything else. And it's like, it's 50 degrees. Why do you have a hat and a scarf and a padded coat on? Uh, so that's kind of strange where I don't really think it's cold and everyone else seems to think that it's just terribly cold here. Of course in the summer it does get to be like 115 so you know that's the kind of weather they get in the summer so 40s is still pretty cold I guess. Uh, another thing to get used to is uh, the cost of everything and the cost of living here is quite a bit lower than where I live in the United States. So. Uh, there's a place across from campus, for instance, where uh, you can get a lunch or dinner of plov and some naan, the bread, and some black tea, and it'll cost you about $2.20. Um, so you can eat very cheaply here at most places. And most places, I said, have almost exactly the same food. So if I want to get plov at the place where I'll spend $2, I can also get plov <coughs> at a place where I might spend $8 probably very similar plov so you know there's no reason not to go to the two dollar place if it's closer more convenient uh, taxis have been an interesting thing I, we've used them a couple of times uh, but the trouble is the taxi drivers don't generally know where the things are that you want to go to so you either take them to something really obvious like the airport or you're going to have to direct them and remember they don't speak english and if you do not speak russian or uzbek or tajik or whatever they're speaking you're going to have problems um, unless you can point a lot and you know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, you just want to go to some museum and you're not sure where it is, your taxi driver may not know where it is. And without a language in common, getting there can be um, not easy. So keep that in mind. There is, however, a nice uh, metro system here. It's not terribly extensive, but it does cover the main area of the center of the city. So if you want to get to the North uh, Railway Station, if you want to get to some of the um, museums and stuff, they may be near a metro stop. Uh, the metro is pretty easy to use. Currently it costs 1,400 songs, which is about 13 cents. 
uh, to get a ticket, hand over the 1400 songs, they give you a little piece of paper, you scan that at the, you know, go through the turnstile and then you're on the subway system and you can be on it all day for that 13 cents if you really feel like just riding trains around. Um, but uh, the everything's sort of marked, but again, sometimes you, you can sound out the Cyrillic, it makes it easier on you than trying to find a sign in English. Usually things are bilingual in Russian and Uzbek. So at least in Uzbek, when they're just spelling the common name of something, like the name of the metro station, then since they're using the Roman alphabet, it can be um, easier to find out where you are. So one of the weirdest things I've found since I've come here is it's very, very difficult to find Band-Aids um, or anything, you know, not to be the Band-Aid brand, but any little thing that the British would call plaster um, they're not in the regular stores. You have to buy them in pharmacies, but not every pharmacy carries them. And some pharmacies sell them in units of one. So you're not going to get a box of 30. You're going to pay for one or I guess a bunch of ones that they'll have to then charge you for. But they, uh, so far, I haven't had to buy any or to look through too many pharmacies to try to find any um, because uh, my husband brought a few over when he came to visit. So I have a supply. But keep that in mind, if you're someone like me who has a tendency to nick up your hands with scissors and knives and whatever else you just managed to like, get a little cut with, um, have a supply or, you know, figure something out, I guess. But that is one of the weird things where band-aids seem to be almost nowhere. And I've asked people, you know, what do you do if you get a little cut? And they were kind of like, um, so I guess I just don't use those kind of things. So they're not very common. Um, I have discovered pomegranates. Have, and so now I have kind of keep myself supplied with uh, pomegranate seeds. So here's my latest pomegranate seeds that I, I uh, prepared. So I just cut open the uh, fruit. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it and get the seeds out. And they're very tasty. So I'm eating a lot of that. Uh, you will find that uh, as far as like produce goes, the produce section in the grocery stores are very small. Uh, they have potatoes, turnips, beets, carrots, onions. There's many varieties of apples, um, pomegranates, oranges, and maybe a couple other things. But the, the produce section of the store is, is pretty small. Uh, so be prepared not to be able to get a lot of vegetables here. Uh, you can go to the markets and you probably can find a little bit more of a selection. But again, the markets often have mostly carrots, potatoes, onions, beets, turnips, or whatever, and um, other things not so common. Uh, you can find a lot of raisins and some of the dried fruit at the, the bazaars, but um, they don't seem to be big on vegetables here, so that can make it a little more difficult. They really like carbs, so getting bread, potatoes, or rice is really easy. And almost every restaurant will sell you any of the three, possibly all three at the same time. So, uh, you know, you can get some bread as a side dish and you get some some rice and then there's some potatoes on your plate as well and probably meat. So for me, being someone who likes meat and potatoes, this cuisine is actually very nice. And it also means I might be gaining a lot of weight because it's hard to avoid all those carbs. So everyone here has been very friendly. Uh, people really try to help out when they realize you don't speak Russian or Uzbek. Uh, a guy came at the door one day, he had a little peephole, he had like an official looking jacket. I thought, oh, okay. So I opened the door, he's trying to tell me something I of course don't know. I tell him, you know, I don't speak Russian. And so he, he thinks for a second and he gets out his phone, everybody has a smartphone. Uh, he does something, he turns it and it's a picture of a meter. And I'm like, oh, you're the meter reader, okay. So I let him in, he looked at the meter, it took like five seconds and he was gone. Uh, so, you know, people will really try to help you out. Um, they all have a phone. If they don't know the word in English, they will look up the Russian word and have it translated and then, you know, try to say it or... Um, so, generally people have just been very friendly and helpful. Um, Tashkent is a great city. I'll be putting up more videos on specific things so that I'm going to visit or have visited and that I really enjoyed. So I will, uh, if I think of any other tips, I will make another video. But for now, just know that I'm having a good time here in Uzbekistan. I really like Tashkent. Uh, it's been easy to find things and to get around. And um, it's an interesting city to visit. So do so if you can. And I will have more tips and more videos later. So remember, if you like my videos, hit like and subscribe. Maybe even hit that bell notification so you know when I put up more videos. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.